Hello everyone. So in this video, uh, we're going to be discussing about the uh, the roof rack uh, for your car that's needed to actually mount a kayak. Um, this works especially for folks who have a little sedan uh, that doesn't come with a integrated roof rail. So in my case, I'm showing you my setup. Your setup might be slightly different, but this is all the basic stuff you need to be able to actually um, mount one or two kayaks. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you need. Um, so you definitely, for bare roofs, you need a baseline towers. Uh, those are actually the little thing pictured here. Those four mounting towers is what's needed to be put on top of your roof um, if you don't have a existing building uh, roof rail, okay? Uh, the next thing you need Again, is those horizontal bars, as you can see, this is grayed out. So you need to go pick and choose a horizontal bar. This is a Yakima uh, Jetstream, uh, which is a more aerodynamic horizontal bar that's needed to be put on top of the baseline, okay? Um, and this is what's on top, and this is what's pictured here. This is the baseline, okay? And for the baseline, you need correct uh, baseline clips for for your particular car and in this instance you need those base clips and you need a set of two one pair for the front one pair for the back so you need a total of four of those clips but each of those box comes with a pair which is two of those clips okay so you need the two boxes for the front and back and optionally which I highly suggest is get also the Yakima's uh, SKS lock cores. Uh, this lock core comes with four of those little locks that you can put over here in the hole right here and comes with three pair, like three keys. Um, after I bought this pair of four pack, I realized I actually need an eight pack at the minimum because um, you have this whole roof rack installed, but you don't have a kayak holder, which is what this this thing that you need to buy to hold the kayak. This is the Yakima J-Lo, uh, which is comes with a pair of those kind of clamping uh, top mount racks, specifically designed for kayak. You can mount one kayak sitting on the side, or you can mount two kayaks sitting uh, back to back on top of your roof rack. And th that's the reason I actually chose the J-Lo as opposed to the Sweet Row, which actually is easier to load your kayak, but you can only load one kayak on your roof. So if you actually is going riding with your loved one um, and you usually ride not a tandem, but uh, two, in two kayaks, you might want to consider the J-Lo because again, this one you can actually uh, carry two kayaks. Um, <clears throat> so this is basically what you need, okay? Uh, for the bare rooftop on your car. I have a Honda Clarity, so later on I'm gonna go outside and just get everything unpacked and follow the instruction on Yakima's YouTube channel to have those roof racks installed. And of course, eventually I'll have to go and buy our very first kayak. And during that time, I should be able to show you guys how to actually mount a kayak onto the JLo with the existing baseline roof rack and the streamline jet stream. Um, a horizontal bars installed so you guys can get a general idea on how well this works or how easy this works okay so um, next section I'm gonna have this installed uh, but I'm not gonna provide detailed instruction because again each car is different and just go to Yakima's website I'm gonna put a link down below on how to get the baseline installed but I'll do a time-lapse uh, of the installation process so you can take a look and see how it works uh, on my particular car okay now, I also want to give you guys just a quick unboxing and, and general idea of what's inside those boxes. Okay, so we'll start with the uh, actually base clips. Uh, again, you need two boxes, which is four of those clips that's needed. And again, this is important because based on your vehicle, uh, the base clip needed is different. So you need to really go to Yakima website and find out exactly which size of base clips that you need and order a pair of those, okay? Because there are a whole bunch of different sizes of those base clips. So for my Honda Clarity, I have the BC117. 
and I need a pair of those. And the base clips, if you open it up, and again, it will have specific instruction uh, pertaining to your actual vehicle uh, with those base clips included. So again, my car is actually listed over here, a Honda Clarity, and it tells you the measurements needed for the M1, M2, P1, T1, and M3, M4, and P2, and T2. Those are the measurements you need for a tape and, and, and adjust the settings on the, uh, the baseline towers in order to get a perfect fit for your particular car. So each vehicle is very different, but I'm gonna show you guys what's inside of those base clip boxes. So you have a little rubbery thing uh, with a plastic kind of a molded thing on top, and you have two of those. And each of those is actually labeled with a number on the bottom. Again, those numbers you'll be able to find over here exactly what you need. And also two of those metal clips. Those are actually used to hook onto the, the side of your car to actually secure the baseline towers. Okay, so this is what's pictured over here that's grayed out. That's a little base clip you need. Okay, so you need four of those and uh, that's pretty much in those two boxes. Nothing fancy. Okay, exact same instruction in the second box of base clips. And so in total you get for your car, four clips and four of those rubber feet, okay? So this, this is all you need for the base clip. The next is this little lock. The lock is actually just a core with some keys. Uh, if you open this up and you can see those are the cores, you put, you just directly insert into the, the cover plate over here and it's gonna act as a lock. So nobody can actually remove those rags from you for, for uh, theft of deterrent. And also you have some keys hidden inside uh, over here. Uh, it's all over three pair of keys. And if you register those, um, if you lost the key, they'll be actually be able to actually recover and send you replacement keys for those locks, okay? Again, uh, I would suggest get the eight pack, especially if you are going to have a one of the extra mounts uh, or the rack uh, for the kayak or for your bikes, you want the eight pack of the core instead of the four pack. The four pack is only enough to just secure those base tower and, and the jet stream bars so nobody can remove them, okay? Uh, next, we'll take a look at the baseline towers, which is a little four foot over here for your bear line or for your bear rooftop on your car. And we should be able to see four of those foot over there. And again, a detailed instructional manual over here, see? which tells you that it comes with those and comes also with a torque wrench. That's actually, that's all the tools you need for the torque wrench. Uh, I'm not sure if the ruler is provided, let's find out. And yes, they actually very nicely included some rulers. So you don't have to go get your own, but if you don't have those rulers or you lost it, um, just use your, you know, your tape measurement. Um, <clears throat> but it also comes with instructions and some stickers on where to actually place uh, those, uh, those, those stuff. It does also tells you to go register your rack and also go to the Yakima's website to watch the video before the installation. You get a good general idea on how to get those racks installed, okay? Again, I'm not gonna show you the details, but just showing you what's inside the box. Uh, you have this little torque wrench right here so it's uh, 3.5 Newton meters uh, torque. So it's actually not very, um, not a tight torque, okay? So this is like a very light torque, uh, torque wrench. They don't want you to over torque and then damage your car's roof uh, that way. Okay, so it's nice that you include the torque wrench. This is all you need. And uh, um, four of those heads, nicely packed inside. Actually, let's just take this out. Give you guys a look and you guys know what um, interestingly there are actually two versions uh, of this uh, of this baseline okay there is a older version that actually have a silver color um, on the cover however um, that's actually the version that I ordered but interestingly I think they ran out of the old version and they just directly sent me actually the new version, which costs, I think, 40 or $50 more. And uh, I think I like, I lucked out 
Uh, they send me the, actually the new version as opposed to the old version that's kind of silver color. I actually post a picture uh, during the video and you guys can see what the old version looks like, which again is just the older design with silver color, but this is definitely the new version with the black cover included. Okay, so that's very nice. I'm really happy. And again, I'm going to, have to keep the instructions aside. Uh, next, we're going to actually take a look at the jet stream, which is what's used to attach uh, onto the, the baseline here. Okay, the baseline has got a few holes that you can adjust. And again, this cover, I believe you can open it by, by just pressing the sides and I guess pull it out. And then you can remove this. Again, the lock core. Let's see how to take it out. There's a little clip. If you unclip this, uh, you can take this out and put the lock core in and then use the existing um, the clip or in clip you actually clip your lock in here so that's how it works okay um, but with the cover removed this is what's inside again i looked at their video the installation should be like super easy and there there's nothing really uh, complicated to it you unlock this and you're gonna put a whole bunch of stuff in here and you're gonna put the base clip in here um again lock with the adapter included you're gonna put the jet stream uh, or the uh, what's it called the jet stream on top of here with the adapter and the installation is complete okay so very very simple and again uh, this thing seems to be pretty well built it's rolled steel inside with plastic cover on the outside um, I don't foresee any problem with holding you know one or two kayaks with this rag top the uh, the supported weight is 165 pounds keep that in mind and again I have four of those I'm gonna leave it aside just we want to take a look at what the jet stream bar looks like, the aerodynamic bar. Okay, so this is the jet stream. And sorry about that. I'm gonna take it out, take a look. And those are the aluminum bars, and I believe they also have another design um, that that is actually rolled steel. That rolled steel bar, horizontal bar, actually supports more weight. I think it's up to 189 or 200 pounds. This one supports 169 pounds, which is enough for, you know, two tandem kayaks, okay? So again, let's see. So it's actually nicely secured by those two plastic tabs on the side. And we'll take it out. And those are the adapters. Again, depending on... Um, depending on what your baseline setup is, you might need different adapters. But again, for this one, they actually included all the adapters and the buttons needed uh, to attach this to the baseline top. Okay, so let's see. And I'm going to take the other side out. I don't want to scratch it. Here we, here we have it. Um, so this is, uh, this is, I believe, the top of the rack. Uh, again, you have this little accessory hole, which I believe is used to actually quickly mount some of the accessories uh, from Yakima. So another reason to buy this one compared to the other uh, steamrolled um, horizontal bar. This is the bottom. The bottom actually have some markings when you install the baseline. You're gonna follow the instructions and align those etched markings right here. Okay, so like those markings. And again, this little rubber piece is actually removable. When you're installing, you have to remove this and later on trim based on the installation of the, uh, of the baseline and then attach the additional area um, to the other side. So. Uh, looks like they included enough for you to do a very nice trim for both sides. Okay, so again, this rubber piece is to protect the bottom, and I'm just gonna for now push it in there. And on the top, it actually gives you direction that tells you, okay, this is what the side that's gonna be facing the front of the car. Okay, um, so you definitely want to align the shape. You don't want to go the other way. Again, 
this is to the front and this is to the back and you know this is the top because it's got actual actual logo over here okay all right and that's pretty much it so those are the let's see show you guys what the cap looks like those are the caps that you're going to use to actually secure it once the installation is finished you basically just uh find the correct end so this is for the other side so they are actually uh, all different shapes you need to make sure you find the correct side this is also for the other side and then those two are for the right side okay. see. yep so right here it's two-sided and we can just actually attach this nicely hopefully Interestingly, um, let's see. try to see why it's not fitting in. Maybe I was attaching it incorrectly. Maybe let's see. But it's definitely directional. Okay. You just need to find the correct uh, end piece and actually clip them in there. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I haven't done the installation. So we're going to be doing this at the very end. So those bar end clips and also the adapters for the baseline. Okay. And this little adapter is basically what you need to actually drop in here. Okay. You're going to drop. There's a little clicking area on two sides. You're gonna drop it in there and I believe it's gonna click and then you can put the adapter in here and then tighten it from the other end and tighten it up to torque, okay? Uh, it looks like it's a pretty solid click. So if I get this in there, it's gonna be really hard to get it out. Again, not gonna be doing this on the video, but at least you know what those, those clips are for. It's actually used to clip on the baseline over here, okay? And again, you have a, a set of four of those. And once we finish unboxing those, uh, we'll take a look at the actual kayak rack, which is what you need to actually carry the actual kayak. So if you guys are lucky and you have an SUV and your SUV has a rail, um, all you need is actually just the jet stream proper adapter um, and uh, um, the baseline or some other things that properly probably might fit your car um, so you don't have to buy the base clip or anything but the rest of the accessory should still be pretty similar okay very last step we're gonna actually leave everything aside I'm gonna put this back into the box In a little bit, I'm gonna go out to my car and have this installed. Um, let's see. We're going to take a look at the actual kayak rack itself, which again should be pretty simple and easy to use. So I've owned the Yakima um, hitch uh, bicycle rack before and they work perfectly fine so i have full confidence that this kayak rack is going to work very good as well this is what's inside um seems to be pretty solidly built visually and uh it's got quite quite some weight to it okay but it looks like it's mostly actually molded plastic um the only thing that's metal is actually this bar right here okay uh the rest of the component is again just molded plastic with some screwing uh that's also metal but that's pretty much it uh we'll take this one out take a look and the nice thing is with this low jack is it called low jack yeah we <laughs> the j-lo with this j-lo rack for kayak um you they actually give you some tie downs for both 
This is a tie down for the front and the back, I believe. And you also got some additional ties to actually secure this um, onto the, uh, the roof rack that you have. Okay, so make sure your kayak is nice and stable and there's only one hook over here, I'm wondering. There's another hook, okay. This is, I believe, for the tie down for the front and the back of the kayak. And those are for the tie down of the kayak themselves onto the, um, the rack and also the rooftop rail. And what are those? Those are the adapters for the round um, bars, but again, I don't need those round bar adapters because I have a jet stream. And also similar included instructions and a revised manual that asks you to go to the YouTube and watch at installation videos before you attempt any installation for the kayak rack, okay? So basically, let's see. The strap, the hook, and the plane strap. The load capacity for this is, if you have two kayaks, the load capacity is 110 pounds. And if you have one kayak, the load capacity is 80 pounds. Keep that in mind. Um, so, back to what I said earlier, if you have two tandem kayaks, uh, this might be out of the weight limit uh, or the load capacity of two tandem kayaks, which usually weights up to, I would say one kayak is 70 pounds, two tandem kayak uh, is going to be up to 140 pounds. So, definitely going to be over the load capacity of the JLO, but again, that might be a risk that you might want to take, I don't know. Um, but yes, so keep that in mind as well. And over here, you have a detailed instruction. I would suggest if, if it's your first time loading any kayaks with the, the with the JLO, bring the instructions with you because uh, it's gonna be, uh, you're not gonna have any experience. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy my first kayak. So I need to have this rack installed and go to the, the seller, actually buy the kayak and have it secured on my car before I take everything back. So definitely you'll want to save those instructions in your car uh, for installation, uh, assembly, reassembly purpose, and also for proper securing of your kayak, okay? And what else in here? Nothing. <clears throat> and that's, that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, this is all you need to have a kayak rack installed on your car's roof without any <coughs> roof rail. Okay, so even if your car have some sort of roof rail like an SUV, uh, you will still be needing most of those parts because uh, the only thing that, you know, the only thing that I don't have is, is the, uh, the baseline clips, which is used to secure everything else onto my car, okay? So there you have it. I'm gonna see you guys in the next section, uh, which is gonna be a time lapse of the installation of this whole setup, okay? <clears throat>
um, the outside all the way first, which you turn this bolt to do that, uh, and then tighten it from the, the, the underside, which makes this clip go, go up. But since my underside is very shallow, I have to do a little modification. So instead of touching it all the way on the out, I actually just had the inside touched first because with that shallow edge, if I go all the way in, it's gonna damage my car. So your car, same thing, make sure you take, put, you know, put close attention to how the underside is constructed. If your underside is not long enough for this whole base to touch, make sure you don't really touch you don't really tighten this first because if you tighten this first your car is going to get damaged okay so that's just one thing that worked uh, you know apply to my car if your car have very deep underside then do this first get it touch the top and then have the underside tightened but for my car i have to tighten the underside first and then adjust the top accordingly okay so that's just one thing that for my car i have to do modification otherwise it's going to damage your car <clears throat> And now with the front already finished, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the backside installation so you can get a general idea uh, on how to install those clips um, onto the baseline with the car uh, inside, okay? <clears throat> So um, I'm gonna be going back and forth because you, you're supposed to tighten the clips you're supposed to tighten the, the clips uh, on two sides evenly so I'll be going back and forth but on both sides and on front and the back the installation is pretty similar okay <clears throat> have my measurement tape always ready just to make sure that the M3 measurement which is from the let's see the M3 measurement is from the front over here to the front side over here which for my car is 32 inch so I always just constantly measure I, as I tighten I also still measure to make sure it's 32 which right now it's precisely at 32 so we're good okay <coughs> So I have my uh, rear side base clip over here and I have the installation tool and the ruler and that's pretty much all you need, okay? First thing first, once you have the measurements done and it's secured, you're gonna pop this up. Once you have that popped up, you can actually put one of those base clips inside. So once the base clip is inside, if it, if it doesn't reach, you adjust, make sure the base, base clip can drop down and reach this edge over here, which is where you want to grab, okay? So this thing adjusts this tilt angle. So later on, we're going to be doing that, but I'm going to do the other side first. It's pretty tightened again. I'm kind of scared since this is already outside of their recommended instructions to tighten it. And I know because of the design of my car, I have a very shallow bottom edge. I can't really tighten it all the way. So just making sure it fits as snug as possible. Once everything is very snugly fit, we're gonna just uh, rock the car a little bit 
test to make sure that none of the parts are moving and uh, uh, then we should consider this installation complete. Uh, the final step is actually just put on the covers uh, once we test to make sure everything's fitted nicely and doesn't move around. All right, so everything's tightened and I have all the covers over here. Last step is just put the cover on and close this uh, access door over here. Alternatively, if you have the, um, <clears throat> the key lock, uh, you can pop this open and drop in the key lock and have all those racks locked nice and tight, okay? This is what it looks like on the Clariton. Not too bad, I would say. Um, actually, it fits pretty nicely. So next, I'm gonna go inside and actually grab the uh, kayak rack just to show you guys how the kayak rack is mounted. It's extremely easy to use, okay? Um, so yeah, let's see. All right, uh, just showing you guys to, how to install the key, okay? So to the, uh, the cover to protect the internals from people moving it. Uh, you have the SKS core lock and it actually comes with two keys, two sets of useful keys and a control key. The control key is actually used to remove the lock, uh, the core from the lock if you actually need to um, install a new set of locks or if you lost the key, whatever. You use the control lock, you put it in here and you can pull this out, okay? So that's a control lock. And uh, um, of course the control lock can only be used when the key is in unlocked position. So it's also to deter the uh, the theft. So if you have the key actually, this is the working key. So if you have the key locking the thing, and once the thing is locked, the control key cannot open it, okay? See? So you definitely want to make sure that the, this is unlocked. So you can use the control key to remove the core if you need to install, reinstall any kind of course. But otherwise, it's super easy. The core just literally drops into the hole. You just need to use a little like, um, you know, flat hat to pry this little tab open and you can drop the key in there, okay? All right, so I just installed all the uh, the cores on the, uh, the key on the cover. So now they should be able to uh, deter any kind of theft on the bars. And last thing I want to do is actually just show you guys what the actual kayak, um, I think it's called the low jack or something, um, the actual kayak stand works, okay, extremely easy to install. So it's just secured by two tabs at the bottom and this thing is like a grip so all you have to do is just align, um, align the thing on the on the rail and you should be able to lock it in place.
seems to be down, but um, there is a little angle issue over there. Um, so I don't know if it's intentional that the angle is kind of crooked a little bit. I might have to adjust the angle just a little bit to make sure that the back one is aligned. But once it's secured and tightened according to the spec, um, all you have to do is just uh, loose the red hook and put it at the angle that you like and lock it. And from that point on, uh, you should be able to uh, mount any kayak onto the snake. So this is what it looks like, seems to be okay, so um, should be fine, but this is the whole installation process and obviously I don't have a kayak right now because I need the stem to go and buy one, but maybe when I buy one I'll show you guys how to actually get an actual kayak on there and see how it works. Alright, as you guys can see I actually um, <coughs> bought our first kayak. And right now I'm driving on the highway. Um, so with that J-Lo, um, I do have a few tips I want to share with you guys when I get home. Because the first time I'm putting on the kayak that I just bought, our very first kayak, um, there are a few areas that's kind of confusing when it comes to mounting the kayak onto the, the J-Lo. So when we get home, I'll talk about those uh, key points so if you're buying your first kayak, take note of those key points and it should also save you more time um, and also save you the embarrassment from um, loading your first kayak onto your car, okay? And in terms of speed, um, I think I'm pretty comfortable driving the car up to 65 to 70 miles per hour. 70 miles might be pushing it a little <laughs> with the kayak mounted on the top because uh, I can hear a lot of wind noise and also the whistling noise I'm not sure if it's coming from the kayak or the JLo kayak rack but that's what I want to share with you guys um, in terms of the noise level of the uh, car with the kayak mounted and again I have a Honda Clarity Alright guys, so as you can see, um, this is uh, actually my uh, second um, kayak that I bought. So now both my wife and me, we can go on a trip together. And obviously I haven't loaded both kayaks onto the rack to show you guys that the JLo rack is able to actually load two kayaks because I need to go buy the additional uh, kayak straps because the one set of the JLo only comes with one set of strap and I need the second set. Um, so a couple points I want to point out before I actually you know finish this whole video is yes there is gonna be a lot of um, car noise um, going above 65 miles per hour and uh, that that was evident on both this little kayak that I got and the other kayak that I bought which is a 12 foot this one is a 15 foot so um, and another thing that I really want to point out is when you load the kayak you need or you want to be best to make sure that there's no twist on those two lines over here because you can see mine is twisted over there and again this one is twisted over here so you definitely don't want the line to be twisted and also another thing to take note is the direction uh, where this bucket is going to be facing out okay you want this side where you can press to be facing outside instead of the inside where you actually start to load the kayak with the straps. Okay, I'm gonna just actually unload the kayak really quick. Okay, so um, again, if you follow Yakima's instructions, it's a super easy to use um, rack for the kayak. Now to unload, you just press this little area over here and it's gonna loosen the lines. And then you can just, you know, get everything out. Okay, super, super easy. Uh, really, nothing to it. 
but the most important thing I want to show you guys is try not to twist the line and also when you load the kayak you want this side to be facing out the side where you can press okay you want this to be facing out not this side where you can press okay and to actually get the strap across you you do it this way I'm gonna show you guys this is the most important part that I learned from loading two kayaks you know um, is again this side facing out not this side and you press and you load the strap from the back of where that big hole is so just load it over here and once you load it you don't have to press it you can just keep tying tying it down or you can press it to get it go faster and when you try to like when you try to push it always try to you know pull it apart and if it does move around you're loaded wrong like if you load it the other side if you load it like this it's very dangerous this is the wrong side okay you always load from the back of the front to here uh, I'll show you if you load it wrong if you load it with this side facing out and you press from the back and you load from the back see what happens it actually unties itself so that's very dangerous so make sure the direction is right the again the thing where you can press is facing outside okay that's the most important part I want to share with you guys and that's the only thing that actually actually secures the kayak so if you load it wrong it might fall off okay and also it's important to have a tie down at the front and the back because when I was driving um, I can feel the kayak was being pushed front and back by the wing and you definitely need a tie down so use those tie downs it's very easy to do uh, my car have a hook at the bottom so it's uh, it's very convenient actually if your car doesn't have a hooking point at the bottom uh, get one of those adapters that I'm gonna put in the link down below so um, you'll put it under the car hood in the front and in your trunk on the back if you if on the back you don't have a hooking point um, okay but that's pretty much it. I'm just going to unload this kayak really quick and show you guys how I unload and we'll conclude the video uh, after I finish unloading. So I'm putting, the, putting this at a wide angle. Let's see. And as you can see, I already like very easily unhooked one strap. Pretty much you're just gonna take this down. And unhook the other strap.
All right, gonna try to unload this kayak, which is about 44 pounds. Okay. Alright, and that concludes um, this video. So, hopefully you guys find the Yakima Jilo um, is a great choice for, I guess, loading any kind of kayaks, like bigger and small. And this one is like a 15 foot. It loaded up perfectly fine. And uh, the one I showed earlier in the video is a 12 foot that I bought. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys would be able to um, get the Jilo, get the Yakima baseline um pack and uh enjoy you know loading stuff on top and of course always make sure before you load that everything is still tightened and if not open the cover and tighten everything up to torque and that's the most important part part okay so uh if you guys have any questions about the baseline and the jet stream or the jlo kayak rack or how to load the kayak uh feel free to ask me in the comment section down below and I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please do hit the like button or subscribe to my channel uh, i would highly appreciate it thanks again and see you in the next video